Most of us know the importance of fans on your CPU's cooler or your graphics card shroud, but what about PC case fans? We can assume that they make some difference in the temperatures of your components overall, but is that difference significant enough to warrant purchasing them? In this video, I'm going to be answering that question. The way I'm going to be doing this is by putting my PC under full load by playing Microsoft Flight Simulator for over 30 minutes twice. The first time, it's going to be without any case fans installed at all. And the second time, it's going to be with two case fans installed. One of those case fans is the 120mm fan that came pre-installed in the Corsair 110R carbide case. It's an exhaust fan in case you're interested. And the other one of those fans is this 140mm Arctic Cool fan that I got at Micro Center. It's going to be used as an intake fan in case you're interested. I'm then going to compare the CPU temperatures in each of the scenario and decide whether or not it's worth having the fans given what they cost. Here are the full specs of the machine that I'm going to be running these tests on. As you can see, these components are likely to be generating quite a bit of heat. Additionally, the 2700X is equipped with its stock cooler and the RTX 2070 Super is overclocked to plus 100 megahertz on the core and plus 500 megahertz on the memory. The CPU is not overclocked at all at this time. The ambient temperature is currently 29.5 degrees Celsius, equal to approximately 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So here are the results of playing Microsoft Flight Simulator for over 30 minutes. I actually did it for about an hour without any fans installed, except of course the one on the CPU cooler and the two on the graphics card shroud. Not going to take those off. Okay, so this was seriously unexpected. The temperatures were just shockingly high. They even reached 84 degrees at one point on the CPU. But most of the time they were hovering around 81-ish, 80, 82, which is still way higher than I expected, to be honest. I was actually expecting the temps to be totally okay, even without the case fans, and this is actually the only time I remember the CPU temperature actually being higher than the GPU while I was gaming. The CPU was 84 or something, and the GPU was 79 at the same time. Although it does make some sense, since in Flight Simulator, when you're really high up in the air, the 2070 Super never even reaches full utilization or even close. The CPU is always the bottleneck when you're high up because the graphics card doesn't need to work as hard. Which, by the way, guys, was part of the reason I chose this game to test because I knew this game, when flying up high, would stress the CPU fully at all times, pretty much. But that also means that these results are not as significant until I play the game again, flying up high similarly with the case fans installed. Also, the case fans are installed around the CPU's region which could kind of help to explain why the CPU temperature was higher than the GPUs for like the entire time. But in this video, I'm going to be focusing pretty much only on the CPU's temperature. And the reason for that is just that the GPU is not really in the path of the case fans anyways. So I saw no reason to really include it. So I was definitely not expecting the temperatures to be this much higher than what I'm used to. I'm not exactly sure how much it is normally, but usually I only use use one 120 millimeter exhaust fan. I only bought the 140 millimeter fan this morning specifically for the video, but still I never measured it with only the 120 millimeter. I just saw normally that it wasn't usually that high. I don't recall having ever seen it hit 84 in a game without an overclock, that's for sure. I mean, I never knew exactly since I don't usually play with Afterburner on. I just want to mention the noise, which is obviously a big factor when considering case fans. So it was definitely noticeably quieter with the case fan unplugged, even just the 120 millimeter one that I'm used to. Although, let's be honest, there's worse games to play than Microsoft Flight Simulator with loud fans that sound like jet engines. That might have added a bit to the immersion. 
if that were the case. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Really, if you're not aware, Case fans are not usually that loud. They're definitely nowhere near as loud as blower-style graphics cards. This would be the perfect game to play with blower-style graphics cards. <laughs> I heard they're making limited-edition Flight Sim PC cases. One of those companies, I think Origin or something, that you can order a pre-built from, which don't do, by the way, guys. But since they're already doing that, someone should come out with limited edition flight sim graphics cards and just make them the loudest blower style cards ever. Use immersion as a selling point. This card is so loud that you can just put your game on mute and you still get the jet engine sound. Okay, so I played Microsoft Flight Simulator for another hour, this time with both the 140mm and the 120mm fan installed. You guys might find these results surprising. I'm sure I did. These results are really unexpected. With the fans installed, the CPU hovered around just 63 degrees and I didn't even see it go higher than 64 once. This is really a massive difference, about 20 degrees. That definitely provides some real overclocking headroom, and I might actually have to start doing that. Now that I have this 140mm fan, I might as well. Honestly, I'm still debating whether or not I'm going to keep this 140mm fan in my build, because the machine is now so much louder at idle. Under load, the difference is not so noticeable, because then all the fans ramp up all the way, and the 140mm fan is not really distinguishable, but when at idle, the 140mm fan is the largest, and also because it's the kind that only has a 3-pin connector, not a 4-pin connector, it does not allow me to control the speed. So it's basically running max, even when it's at idle, which makes it much more noticeable at idle. And at idle, my build goes from being almost silent, especially since the graphics card has a zero RPM mode, to being definitely audible, but not too bad. So you guys take that into account if you think about purchasing 140 millimeter fans, especially if you're getting the three pin kind that you're not going to be able to control the speed on. So if you're considering buying some additional case fans, I would honestly recommend that you get the ones with the 4-pin connector, which let you adjust speed, even though they do cost significantly more. So if you have the budget to do it, do it. Otherwise, the 3-pin ones will do in a pinch. Maybe consider 120 instead of 140, though. I just got 140 because I wanted to highlight the difference between no fans and fans. So I got the biggest fan to make the biggest difference, in addition to the 120 millimeter fan that already came pre-installed in my case. So I would definitely recommend at least one case fan, but maybe not more than one, including any that come pre-installed, unless you're overclocking. This is because while it's true that hot temps could potentially lower the longevity of your components, I do not see this as being the most pressing concern because my CPU was at about 70-ish max under load before I added the second fan. So with just the 120 millimeter fan that came with the case, it was running at only 70 under max load, and that wasn't most of the time. Most of the time it was actually lower. Besides, as far as the longevity thing goes, how long are you going to use your components anyway? I mean, it's not really going to make that big of a difference, most likely, unless you really run your components way too hot. I mean, I ran mine for a good 30 minutes or even an hour today at 80 degrees on my CPU and nothing happened and I'm sure nothing was going to happen. But if you run it at 80 degrees every day over like two years, I would not recommend that at all. It really could be bad for your CPU. So yeah, if I decide not to overclock in the end, because the Ryzen 2700X anyways is not exactly the best overclocking CPU, which is the reason I haven't been doing it in the first place, then I will remove the fan since it's much quieter without it. And I'm not terribly worried about longevity for the reasons I already said. I just want to clarify that when I say that my build is now loud at idle with the 140mm fan, I mean just a bit loud. Just like a low whirring sound from the fan is audible. But nothing like, I don't know if you guys know how loud the PS4 is when it's under load, especially with the modern titles that's really not built to run properly. I have a PS4 and 
the sound is just terrible, especially when I run a modern game. Like Red Dead Redemption 2 in particular is just terrible. It just destroys my PS4. The fans on my PS4 become so loud that I literally cannot hear the game through my monitor speakers. I need to wear headphones. But anyway, I'm just saying it's nothing like that. It's not going to like drive you crazy like the PS4 does. I'm sure if any of you guys have one, you'll know what I'm talking about exactly. Especially the old kind, not the Slim or the Pro, the original one that actually came out in 2013. Seriously though, what a difference. 20 degrees difference from adding those two fans. Usually you think to get that kind of difference, you have to like change your cooler or something. But just adding two case fans really made all the difference. Now that all the results are in, what did you guys think? Are case fans worth it or not? And if so, what type of case fans would you buy? I want to know all about it down in the comments. And why not leave a like while you're at it? Thank you for watching.